When you mention the word museum, and you also think of South Kensington, it's always the science and natural history museums you think of. Not the one we're going to today, the Victorian Albert, which has been here for 160 years and contains history for many thousands of years. Now in this video we're going to show you a selection of some of the things you can see here at the Victorian Albert Museum and we're going to try and show you some of the most popular things and when you come in through the front door you're immediately greeted with the Buddhism section. This stone engraving showing the Buddha descending to earth dates back to the year 200 to 300. The purpose of the video is to give you a feel for the things that you can see across the six different floors of the V&A Museum and there are miles and miles of corridor that you can go down and I really can't recommend highly enough that if you're coming here that you do it over at least two or three days because there is just so much to see. Also if you're coming down here it's worth checking out their website because quite often they have different exhibitions on that you need to get tickets in advance so you can really make a full use of a day when you're here. Another great thing about the V&A is there's no charge to get in and you don't need to buy tickets in advance so if you're looking for something else free to do in London to bide your time well the V&A is another great place to do it especially with London's inclement weather at times. Also what I like here is whilst you've got rows and rows of different things to look at everything is really clearly labelled so you can really get the most out of it and this piece of marble is from 1796. Now, If you're coming here during the summer and the weather's good and you've got children with you you're going to like this, the John Medeski Garden. with a cafe in the corner of the square and this area in front of you turning into a pond for children to play in. This is a great place to come and chill out during the summer. Also it's a great place to come and have a look at the architecture of the buildings because the details on the top of the buildings are absolutely phenomenal and let's just give you a view of those as we look around the square. Now in this video as I said before we're not going to be able to show you everything but one of the things we really did want to bring to you today is this, the cast courts and this is an amazing section. This section opened in 1873 and the idea is to show copies of architecture and artworks from around the world. So what you've got here is you've got different things which have been done in plaster, electrotypes and photographs which are central to this part of the museum. It was opened by the V&A to help the British public to widen their choices of architecture and to appreciate some of the different things from around the world. Today with London being a hub of international tourism I bet many people turn up and go oh that's from home. The arch you're looking at here is a plaster cast of the Portico de la Gloria in Spain. This 17 meter wide cast took just over two months to create. It's amazing how tall these objects are as you're walking around but here's a tip for you wait until you get to the second floor to really take it in because it's a fantastic balcony that goes between the two galleries of casts and we'll show you that later in the video.
This is a cast of the Tabernacle in Belgium, and the monument is over 17 meters high. And inside the cast to hold it up is a tree trunk, which you can see by going round the back. Now this lectern wouldn't look out of place in a Harry Potter film, but it's incredible. It's made out of plaster, but painted bronze, so it looks realistic. And the same effect has been done on this tomb with the snails at the bottom, which is the tomb of Saint Sabaldus from Germany. Now you may be wondering what these two massive towers are, and I'm going to cover that a little bit later. But what you need to know is there's a Victorian industrial chimney inside holding it up. If you've seen our recent video on Westminster Abbey, you'll recognize these immediately. Yes, they're the tombs of royalty. And I'll put a link to that video up in the top right hand corner. These are the casts to the main doors of Or Cathedral in France. Now, whilst these are all casts from different places across the globe of different attractions, I'd love to know in the comments down below, have you seen any of these in the original places and how long ago was it that you saw them? Here they're showing the process of how they cast metalwork electro lighting and the different stages it goes through to produce these items. Don't forget all of this was done in the 1800s and the detailing is incredible. Just look at this pocket watch. We move into the second hallway of casts and the arch at the far end is the doorway of the Cathedral of San Petronio, which is from Bologna in Italy. Whilst there are many things to see, one of the ones that really stands out is the cast of David, of course from Italy, done by Michelangelo. And apparently the story goes that Queen Victoria was so shocked when she first saw this cast, a proportionally accurate fig leaf was made to cover his offending nudity. As you can see, the cast quartz is quite an eclectic collection of different plaster casts from around the world. But it certainly helped the Victorians to see what was out there away from Great Britain. Here we're in the medieval and renaissance period, which covers the years 1350 to 1600. If you're coming to the V&A, another place and another area you've got to come to is to come to see the Raphael cartoons, which were created between 1515 and 1516. These are all part of the British Royal Collection, but have been lent to the V&A since 1865. These are seven large cartoons for tapestries, and they show scenes from the Gospels and also the Act of the Apostles. The video quality is not great, so apologies for that, but the light is low to protect the paintings. Also, if you're coming to this section, there's some great places where you can sit and just look at these massive paintings. And every so often you'll see someone's head walk past, which just gives you an idea of the scale of these things. If you're loving what we're showing you in this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button so we can share London with more people across YouTube. A set of stairs off this gallery takes you up to the first floor. And there, when you enter the first floor, you're in the area of Britain between 1500 and 1760. And you're greeted with this, which is a piano from the Elizabeth I's reign. This instrument called a virginal was similar to a harpsichord. 
If British history is your thing, then this area is an absolute treasure trove. Now this bed from 1590 is known as the Great Bed of Ware, which is an extremely large four poster oak bed, which was carved and it was originally housed in the White Inn in Ware, hence it got its name. Apparently the bed was built to accommodate four couples. If you lived in the year 1600, this would be the furniture. So on the wall you have a carpet and then you've got two types of armchairs and in the middle you have a chest. All I would say is the armchair on the right is probably for very small people. One of the royal reigns that really gets the historic juices going has got to be Henry VIII and there's a whole section looking at various things from his reign from his palaces which are here at the Victorian Albert Museum including some of the jewellery. It's incredible to believe that I've been to South Kensington so many times and done the other museums but this is the first time ever I've been to the V&A and I must admit I will be coming back because there's just so much to see. It's amazing to think that some of these items are over 500 years old. Now one of the things I really highly recommend you do if you're going to visit the V&A Museum is spend a bit of time beforehand just deciding where you want to go just so you can make the most out of your time. Also if you want to keep taking breaks there's lots of cafes here at the V&A as well so you can take a break, have a breath and then go back to it. This is a tapestry on the court of King Henry VIII and then on loan from the National Portrait Gallery you have this portrait which was done of Henry VIII. In most paintings you'll see of Henry VIII he's standing tall and regal. This is understood to be the most realistic painting. This is one of many writing boxes King Henry VIII owned and were found at Greenwich Palace once he died in 1547. As you can see it held many different compartments for all the different writing implements that he used to write letters across the country. Let's go from 500 years to something that's less than 30 years old. Hanging underneath the dome as you enter into the V&A Museum from the Cromwell Road entrance you have this glass sculpture. Known as the Rotunda Chandelier it was originally called the Ice Blue and Spring Green Chandelier. Created with blown glass it's 27 feet long and 12 feet wide. Now whilst this isn't a historic piece it's definitely worth coming to spend the time and have a look and you can get your best look from here which is on the second floor balcony and we're now going to show you around the V&A from the second floor and the beautiful views over some of the galleries. The balcony is also another great place to sort out where you might want to visit because you can look down into various galleries and decide if you want to go to those or not depending on what you see. Here from the second floor we're back looking at the medieval and renaissance areas. Now as you can see when you have really large artifacts like this to look at in the museum actually looking from the second floor really does give you a great angle at which to look at. Across the six floors there's seven miles of corridors to cover so yep making your choice is really important. And now that view I promised you of the cast courts from the second floor. The columns are Trajan's column from Italy and it's actually one column but split into two because you couldn't get the whole part into the building with the plinth section being the bottom. Whilst walking on the ground floor and amongst all of the different casts you fill among it when you're up here on the second floor you get great views across but also with these comfy chairs you can sit and have a good stare at your favourite casts as well and get some really good pictures.
we've still got some amazing ceiling art to show you and also the cafe which is quite incredible but before we do we've got some more areas and more items from the buddhism section so come on, tell us, what has been your favourite thing that you've seen at the V&A Museum that we've covered on this video today? Put it in the comments down below and let us know. It'd be good to see what you thought. Now this is a back staircase round by the cafe. And the reason we're filming this is just look at the walls and the ceiling. Do you know what? You could actually be, well, anywhere in Italy really. Let's just look at the detail on the ceilings here. It's almost your own Sistine Chapel here at the Victorian Albert Museum in the centre of London. Not only here are the items incredible to look at, so are the ceilings. And this, believe it or not, is one section of the cafe where you can come and sit. There we go. And there's people having some great food. But yes, that's just one part of the building itself. So it really is an incredible place to come. If you think you've seen art, you've seen nothing until you've been to the National Gallery, which is another free place to go in London to really take in some of the fantastic artwork that is here in the capital for you to see. So if you click on that, I'll see you in there.